Namaste. So here we are with the finale, the conclusion of chapter one of Sri Panchadashi. So far, what he has done is shown the distinction, the difference between the individual and Brahma. The individual is composed of various bodies, the three bodies of gross, subtle, and causal, and the five sheaths, the food sheath, energy sheath, the mind sheath, intelligence sheath, and bliss sheath. So these should be separated. These should be discriminated and distinguished because at the time of meditation, one has to reject all these things, neti neti, and rest only in the real self. That self is not an individual, is not a person, because a person or personality is a limiting adjunct, an upadi, which covers the original self and makes it appear as if an individual exists. But actually, it's all just software. <laughs> it's all just maya. It's just a thought. It's an illusion. And it's temporary. That is the thing that makes it necessary to reject all the 24 tattvas, including mind, intelligence, and false ego, and even consciousness. Because the self does not use consciousness. It is naturally aware of itself without having an object, without entering a dualistic state. This must be known. This must be experienced by meditation. And once this insight is gained, then there is no more forgetting the non-dual state. This is the uninterruptible meditation, the samadhi of self-realization. Text 62. Vakyam apratibadhang sat prakparokshavabhasite karmamalak then the great dictum, freed from the obstacles of doubt and ambiguity, gives rise to a direct realization of the truth, as a fruit in one's palm, truth which was earlier comprehended indirectly. Amalaka is a small fruit, emblic myrobalan. Text 63. Parokshang Brahma Vidyanang Shabdang Deshika Purvakam Buddhi Purvakritang Papang Kritsnang Dahati Vahnivat. The knowledge of Brahman obtained indirectly from the Guru, teaching the meaning of the great dictum, burns up like fire all sins committed up to that attainment of knowledge. Text 64 Aparokshatma vijnanam shabdang deshika purvakam sangsara karanagyanatma saschanda bhaskaraha the direct realization of the knowledge of the self obtained from the Guru's teaching of the great dictum is like the scorching sun that dispels the very darkness of avidya, the root of all transmigratory existence. Text 65 Ittang tattva vivekang vidhaya vidhivan manasamadhyaya Vigalitang sang sriti bandha prap noti padang padang naro nachirat. Thus a man distinguishes the self from the five sheaths, concentrates the mind on it according to the scriptural injunctions, becomes free from the bonds of repeated births and deaths, and immediately attains the supreme bliss. By the method, described in this chapter.
So this chapter has given the method. And I think it is very necessary for all aspirants for enlightenment to study this chapter deeply. So we have linked in the video description the edition of Sri Panchadashi that we are using for these presentations. And you should study it carefully. And we have also linked an alternate commentary, which I think goes into too much technical detail, huh? but it could be helpful to intellectual oriented persons, also linked in the description. So basically, this work stands without a commentary. And the reason for that is it's so down to earth and practical. Rather than getting into a large number of policy discussions or basic arguments about the philosophy, uh, like Shankara's purports on Vedanta Sutra, for example, or any of the Upanishads, rather than anticipating possible arguments and objections, Vidyaranya goes right to the practice. This is what you need to do. Yes, there are some polemic discussions, but they're very minor. They don't occupy center stage. They're just kind of side topics. The main topic here is sit down and do the sadhana. <laughs> sit down and do the work. Go over these shlokas carefully and try to distinguish between the real and the unreal the seer and the seen, the knower and the known, the witness and the phenomena, the permanent and the temporary. This is the whole game. This is the whole setup. <laughs> this is the whole work that brings you automatically to the realization, tatvamasi, thou art that. What am I? Ahang brahmasmi. I am Brahman. What else could you be? All the phenomena of the mind, intelligence, the body, the world, etc., are basically mechanical, unconscious, driven by karma or by the will of the Lord. This is the nature of the world. It's like a wind up mechanism that's invented in the beginning, all in one piece. And then it just runs out its changes over the period of the manifestation. That's all. It's already determined what's going to happen. But we are just seeing a slice of time, huh? according to our limited intelligence, which is attached to the body. So we mistake cause and effect. We commonly mix them up and get it all wrong and think that the body is the cause of consciousness or the mind is the cause of consciousness. Or now what's the latest theory? Some kind of quantum entanglement is the cause of consciousness. This is all nuts. Why? Because consciousness is axiomatic. It is the one thing that never changes. It is transcendental. It is absolute. It doesn't need no stinking theory. It is prior to all else. So consciousness is the thing, Brahman is the thing that everything depends on, that everything is derived from that everything is made up of. Think of it. I mean, you're looking at this video. Well, what are you looking at? Some image provided by your eyes and decoded by your brain into a sort of a, you know, a scan, a viewpoint, or a point of view on this discussion, which is about you, which is about your nature, your mind and how your mind is a deceptive illusion, fooling you into thinking that all of this phenomena actually exists. But it doesn't. It can't. 
because it has a beginning, it also has an end. And that span of existence in which it appears to be real is only a tiny fraction, only a flicker in the scope of eternity. Therefore, how can we say that this temporary thing exists at all? This is the philosophy behind neti neti. Huh? This thing is presenting itself to me, huh? this camera, this studio, this microphone. Huh? And I'm supposed to talk to it as if I'm talking to a dear friend. <laughs> At least that's the illusion. That's the setup. That's why I do is a close-up on the face instead of, you know, zooming out and showing the whole body. Because I want it to be like an intimate conversation. It is an intimate conversation because it's about what makes you tick. What makes you who and what you are. This is the answer to the question posed by Ramana Maharshi. Who are you? You are a being that is apparently an individual who is suffering because of the transitoriness of external phenomena observed through the senses. And because the mind has expectations and desires and all kinds of, you know, extra attachments. Huh? Vritti, transformations or modifications of the mind. Because these are constantly blocking your view of reality, you think you are this body, this person, this name, these activities, this karma, all of this stuff. But you're not. You're simply the observer. So what else could you be but Brahman? See, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> that you could be a transformation of some little quantum who dingies, you know? <laughs> Just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. No. You are the substrate of all. There is no other possible explanation because consciousness is permanent and everything else is temporary. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.